Okay, guys. Well, today I thought that I would address the three main verses that modern Christians justify their blaspheming of God the Father and worshipping the Son as though he were their God. And so not only are they blaspheming God the Father, they're actually blaspheming the Son as well because Jesus was very clear that we are to worship only God the Father. In fact, he says in John 4.21 that there will be a time that nobody worships the Father. And so that prophecy of Jesus is actually being fulfilled right now in these times because look around you nobody is worshiping the father they're all worshiping the son as though he were the father as though he were god and equal to god the father and so i am going to basically try and give a esoteric explanation to these verses because as we know the bible is an esoteric work jesus tells us in matthew 4 11 12 that the bible is written in parables so that everyone on the outside does not understand the hidden truths and so they think they're understanding them but they're not actually perceiving them correctly and they think they're hearing them correctly but they're not actually understanding them correctly. And so he says this to the 12 apostles. So for any Christians who try to claim that that is just about the sinners and the unbelievers, well, again, you are incorrect because he actually pulls the 12 apostles aside and he says to them, when they ask him about the parables, well, I'm saying this in parables, so not everybody understands it because there are only going to be a certain amount of souls who pass judgment. And so to make it fair, we're not going to give everybody these divine truths. We're going to encode them so only the worthy will actually seek them out because that is what God wants. God wants only the worthy to go look for these truths. And that is how he can sort the wheat from the tars. Because if you lack courage and then you think you can just rock up to church on a Sunday or a Saturday, because I know that's what Christian domina denominations in these times argue about, as though that's any significance to God the Father, whether you worship him on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is of no concern to God the Father. God the Father asks that we just leave one day to contemplate his creation and to find gratitude for everything he has, he has provided us. In fact, it's not even something that God the Father insists. It's something that we should do as a way to be thankful for our gifts. So anyway, I do not want a tangent off down that path today. So Jesus basically was saying in Mark 4, 11, 12, that because there are only a certain amount of souls that will pass judgment, a certain weight of souls, I mean, that is how divine operation works, there is a certain weight that pass judgment and that is why you are weighed. That is why the Bible says he will weigh those depending on what they have done. I know they like to believe that it's all about just worshipping their way into Christ's favour. But again, this is the Pharisees and the Sadducees fooling them because the devil is quite clever I don't know if they've worked that out yet, but that's what's happened. 17 centuries ago, the evil now in control of the world and who took control back then used the Catholic Church as a cover to 
infiltrate Christianity and then they decided what books and gospels would go into the Bible and the ones that didn't make the cut were either burned or are basically in the Vatican Library and I can assure you they're in the Vatican Library because they do not destroy this knowledge because they know knowledge is power. They have just taken this knowledge from mankind so that they can basically program Christians into taking the wide path. And so anybody that says, oh, well, I'm not a Catholic, well, you just are being fooled by Satan once again because the Catholics are the ones who put together your Bible. And I don't care if they added, you know, um, 12 books or, you know, you only read 66 books and not 73 books. It doesn't matter because you are worshipping the Son as God the Father. That's all that matters. That's all they had to do. And you are also being apathetic and not going out and actually engaging in the works of Christ, which is what he instructed in his absence was for followers of Christ, his followers to continue on the works in his absence. And you are not doing that either. And I'm sorry, just going and donating to your church is not cutting it, okay? That is just a lazy way to engage in helping others. You need to go out among the people and help them any way you can. So now that I have explained why the parables are a way to encode the truth, because, you know, as I said, it is those who lack courage to look outside of the Bible who are not worthy of the truths. If you are too afraid to go and seek out knowledge, why would God the Father think you are worthy of that knowledge when you don't even have the courage or the backbone to go seek it out? So let's have a look at these verses that they always use. So the first one is John 10, 25, 30. And this is where Jesus says, I and the Father are one. And the other one is John 8, 58. He says that before Abraham was, I am. And then the other one is John 10, 38, and he says, the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Now, let's just deal with John 8, 58, where he says, before Abraham I was, I am. Okay, before Abraham was, I am. This is the easiest one. Everything was with God the Father before it's brought into creation. It doesn't make everything God the Father. So that is easy, that one. The other two, I and the Father are one and Father, the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Jesus is talking about the same divine spirit that he shares with the Father. He's not saying I am the Father. He's saying the same divine spirit in the Father is in me. When you see the Father, you see me, when you see me, you see that because we share the same divine spirit, because I have that divine spirit to the highest degree of any human on the face of the earth. That is what makes him God-like, but he is not God the Father and he is not equal to God the Father because he who is sent is not greater than he who sent him. And then we can actually go and even confirm this more when we look at Numbers 23, 19, because it states that God is not a man or a human. And then in John 4, 23 to 24, it tells us that God is spirit. So if God is spirit and God is not a man or a human, then we know that we are being told that Jesus is not God the Father. He is a representative for God the Father on the earthly plane because he is the firstborn divine extension, the firstborn branch of God the Father. He holds the divine nature in the highest degree. And this is what the Pharisees and the Sadducees have 
not told you. This is why you don't understand the difference between a divine man and a mortal man. And so until you understand the difference, you are going to be led astray by the antichrists who have taken cover in the Catholic Church and infiltrated Christianity and they are now the most powerful religious organization on the planet. So consider this, we have six prophets in the Old Testament and then the apostles Peter, Paul and James were all killed for sharing the teachings of Christ as well as Jesus being killed for also sharing the teachings of of God the Father, okay, to bring people to God the Father. He wasn't bringing people to himself. He was bringing people to God. And he was saying, listen to me, I'm doing all of these miracles because you're such dumb asses and you won't just believe me and you won't go and research this for yourself. I'm going to show you all these things that I can do that no other man can so that hopefully you take me seriously because it's very important that you come to God the Father. He was never saying, oh, you must worship me, you must serve me. He was always reiterating that we have to serve God the Father. So, so now look at the people in the most powerful church on earth today. Okay, what were they doing to those who were sharing sacred knowledge a few centuries ago? Oh, were they burning them alive? Torturing them in their torture chambers? Flaying them alive. You know what flaying them alive is? It's literally pulling their skin and their body off their bones. Okay, slowly. Um, so please, you modern Christians, don't tell me you've been persecuted because you are just basically spitting in the face of every real follower of Christ who has been persecuted for trying to share these truths and elevate the masses out of their ignorance. So they were flaying them alive, they were hacking them and their families to pieces, burning them to death in their churches. I mean, this is all verifiable. You can go and look this up. They don't hide the truth. Nobody speaks about it, but you can go and easily look this up. And so they're the ones that are now in the most powerful place, you know, the most powerful situation in, you know, look, all the, we know that all of the governments, all of the politicians, they all go and kiss the ring of the Jesuit, kiss the ring of the Pope. So they're the ones in power now. They're the ones that were killing people, hacking people, burning them to death, but they're the holy ones. So you think Jesus is going to be proud of what they were doing in his name? Is that what you're going to tell me, modern Christians? And so these are the ones who chose what, Bible, what books would go into your Bible. These are the ones who were burning books that wouldn't go into the Bible. These are the ones who told you how to interpret the Bible under threat of death, of being burned alive. Okay, you weren't even allowed to read the Bible in English or translate the Bible in English a few centuries ago without being burned at the stake. Okay, but they're the holy ones. Is that what you're telling me? So I think you've been led astray, guys. And um, look... The devil is clever. Okay, Jesus even told us, us this when he says to Peter, get, get thee behind me, Satan. Okay, he's basically alluding to the fact that the devil is so clever and masks himself behind the appearance of godliness. Okay, so do you think it's a, a coincidence that the one apostle that, the one apostle that Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, get thee behind me, Satan, is the same apostle that the Catholic Church claims is their very first pope, they're mocking you. They're mocking humanity. They're mocking mankind. So I'm here again to beseech you, please do not continue down this wide path, worshipping God as, worshipping Jesus as though he were God the Father. You need to worship God the Father. Then you are automatically worshipping the Son. But if you are worshipping the Son in error, you have destroyed your soul. I don't understand why you're risking it when you could just worship the Father and then you are worshipping the Son anyway. Well, I'm going to leave it here, guys. And as always, peace out.